You are listening to 1F914, the show that really makes you thinking emoji. That's right, two days in a row. I'm going to try and start doing these more often because why not? Today's episode is brought to you by Rule 34 Kirby Vore. What? Why is that almost certainly a thing? <laughs> oh, man. You know it is. You know that there is Rule 34 Kirby porn. And you know that it's Vore. <laughs> um, don't Google it. Okay. Today's topic is Thundercats Roar. And I know what you're thinking. Why is this necessary? It's necessary because I am not going to say what you think I am going to say. Now, I do share. I do share the majority of opinions being expressed about this franchise. But I'm playing devil's advocate right now. In particular, because people are comparing it to the 2011 Thundercats reboot. And here's why that's a problem. The 2011 Thundercats reboot wasn't any less of an insult to the original series than this new one is. The original series was defined as like a fusion between classic anime art style back when, you know, they weren't... It wasn't a derivative circle jerk with everybody mimicking this overly digestible style that was defined by uh, Miyazaki and uh, 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 um, Toriyama. Like, that's what everything is now. Like, it was the most, it, like, the 2011 uh, series was the most cookie cutter shown in anime. It was the worst example and I don't mean it was bad I'm just saying it was just the worst example of cookie cutter shown in anime art style that I have ever witnessed and it didn't combine anything from what I saw from like western animation it was just it was just everything that comes out of Japan and why is that being praised and I'm not saying Japan art is bad but it's not it's not innovative it's not it's not anything new and applying it to something not that far off from it, stylistically, it doesn't innovate that thing in any way. Now, maybe the 2011 series improved the story. I've seen that a lot, but I never watched it for multiple reasons. One, I don't really watch TV. And wow, that was that was from 2011. I don't... I don't remember it being that long ago. I remember people talking about it way more recently than that. But especially in 2011, I didn't really watch much TV. Um, and I don't think I had cable. Maybe I did. I don't even know. Um, but yeah, I didn't watch it. And now you might be thinking, well, then you can't say anything. But I'm not commenting on the storyline. As I said, it might have done amazing things with the story. But we are not talking about the storyline here. Everything that people are saying about Thundercats Roar is about the art style. And since we are talking about the art style, I don't need to watch 2011 to tell you why you're wrong. I just need to know a few simple facts. I've already expressed my opinions about the 2011 art style and why it is not this thing to be held on a pedestal. But I, but, and so realistically, when it comes down to it, I have not seen, I have not seen Thundercats Roar. I have not seen the original. You have not, I don't think anybody has seen Thundercats Roar yet because I don't think it's been released yet, but we're still talking about it as if it has been and that it's already destroyed everyone's childhood. So since you haven't seen it, you don't know what the story is. You're going by the art. And the thing about the 2011 series is it was made to sell toys. The toys were everywhere, everywhere. Every store had the Thundercats, 2011 Thundercats toys. It was basically no different than the Star Wars or Marvel thing, or the Avengers toys. There are Avengers everywhere. Everything that can be branded 
diapers, uh, probably tampons. I don't know. Everything has has freaking Thor on, Thor on it or Hulk. Friggin, it's it's ridiculous. But it's to be expected, and that is at its purest level is the only reason the 2011 series existed was to sell toys. It was a marketing campaign. They might have had brilliant showrunners who and brilliant writers, but they were still uh, like beholden to marketing executives. Now, I've seen Thundercats Roar compared to things like Gravity Falls, Steven Universe, Adventure Time. I'm reading these so they can keep, keep... And even my... I don't think anybody's made the comparison, but even My Little Pony, to a certain extent, in many ways. And those shows are constantly being praised for deep, complex, and often dark storytelling. And yet people are comparing Thundercats Roar to them as if it were a bad thing. I mean, I've also seen the comparisons to Teen Titans Go, which I guess with the title makes a little more sense. But as I said, we haven't seen it yet. That's still just comparing the art. And the thing about the thing about um, Teen Titans Go is it's difficult to compare Thundercats to Teen Titans Go as far as it only being a marketing campaign because Teen Titans Go are established characters in a in a universe that already has an abundance of source material that can, can be used to inspire toys. You are not seeing merchandise for the characters on the shelves only. You're not seeing only Teen Titans Go merchandise on shelves. So you can't really have, you don't have an accurate measuring stick for whether or not somebody is buying this because of that series. Like you could have a five-year-old at the, at, at Toys R Us. <laughs> okay. Um, you could have a five-year-old at, um, uh, <laughs> well, not Toys R Us. But you know what I mean? You could have a five-year-old look at a, at a store shelf, store on the shelf, looking at the toys and it's like, oh, there's clearly the Teen Titans Go to, uh, toy. That's for like, Realistically, someone his age. Oh, but then there's the the Teen Titan like uh, uh, action figure that looks nothing like Go, that has all the moving parts that this five year old actually wants. Which toys are gonna sell? Um, but that's the thing is the other examples I gave: um, Gravity Falls, Steven Universe, Adventure Time. We're not. We're, I'm not gonna repeat My Little Pony because it does not. It does not work for what I'm about to say. That you don't really see much in the way of toys beyond uh, Funko type shit and plushes. My Little Pony is everything, everywhere, always. But the other examples, not not really. You don't really see much. And if I'm wrong, then you're wrong because I'm not wrong. Okay, like you don't. They're they, they're they're no, they're not there. It doesn't exist. You can't find it. Um, that doesn't fall into one of those two categories of Funko type shit. And plush toys. Um, and if the uh, if if the marketing execs, okay, if the marketing execs are not able to make anything knowingly, you know they know they can't. And that's the thing is like this show did not get approved with them thinking, oh man, we can make so many, we can make so many. Uh, Stretch Armstrong style action figures out of these noodle arm characters. No, no, that they know they can't do jack with it, but it still got approved. Meaning, its inability to sell toys is probably not going to kill the series the way the 2011 series probably got killed because it couldn't sell the toys that they thought they were going to sell. And without pressure from marketing executives, the, it, like, as I said, it's going to have a better chance of being a more complete series, and it's also going to be more authentic to what the writers want to do, not what they're being told to do. Like, if there's no potential for a, a toy line, then they're not going to be told, you need to put this type of character in the series because we want to sell this type of toy, which happens constantly. 
and it's just not going to be there. And that's my, that's really my opinion. Like, I think we should give it a shot. Like, and I need to be clear. I don't, I, I have not watched these shows I've compared it to either. I'm going by what other people have said. And this is a criticism of what everyone is saying. So it's justified. But the art, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. And as I said, this is devil's advocate, but it's valid devil's advocate. Like everything I am saying is 100% valid. And I believe what I am saying. And I believe we should give Thundercats Roar a chance to fail miserably in the first season before we really start saying that it ruined our childhood because your childhood was ruined when you grew up. Nothing ruins your childhood. It's in the past. If you have memories about your childhood, updating it is not going to updating it in a new style is not going to ruin your childhood because the things from your childhood are still there and you can still revisit them. And that is the stupidest argument against anything I have ever heard ever because it doesn't even ruin your ability to share th this thing from your childhood with your children because that thing still exists you can you can plop your five-year-old's ass on the couch and turn on the original thundercat series and force him to watch it with you whether the new series exists or not and then you can watch the new series and point out to him why it's terrible so that he can share in your opinions now, now that I've gotten that all out of the way, I just want to say that the Teen Titan Roar producer, Victor Courtright, looks like an idiot and he needs to cut his goddamn hair. He's making man buns just... He's giving... I don't have a man bun. I don't have my hair up at the moment, but when I put my hair up, it is more like a samurai top knot. It is not this fucking little on the top of my head. But his is just the most soy boy bullshit I have ever seen in my life. And he doesn't even have a fucking beard. Um, yeah. Cut your damn hair. You look like an idiot. Now. Now. I no longer have a script. I've reached the end. <laughs> this wasn't a script. It was a guideline. I've reached the end of my guide to where it just says new IP rant. And you've heard this before also. I'm just sick of them taking things from the past and reimagining them or relaunching them or rebooting it or whatever term you want to use to describe it. It needs to stop. And here's the and here's why. Like I don't care about them taking this thing from the past and continuing it, but you don't need to retell the stories you've already told or reimagine them so that they're now some alternate reality. We want to know what happened to these characters 20 years after the finale, especially since all of this content that has already that has already been produced, if you turn it into backstory for the current material, you'll be able to repackage that with no with without any cost to you. And then resell it to people who are like, well, what happened before this? You have a, you already have a prequel. Use it and make money off of something you don't have to put any money into creating because it's already created. And then it also, it, it just, and then realistically, when it comes down to it, we're watching for the characters and the characters are not the way they look. The characters are the writing behind them. Like if you take a book and read it, and it has no pictures in it. It doesn't matter what you how, how anybody draws the characters because the characters are still what is written in that book. And the same applies to television series. Like, fundamentally, y you could draw them in any style and they will be drawn in any style by the watchers, by the viewers. Like, this is like... Uh, Thundercats Roar is, is just pure Tumblr fan art. That is exactly what it is. It is just pure Tumblr fan art. And you know that that is 90% of what you will look, find when you Google anything. It's just these like mitten-handed little freaking chibi abominations. That's all you find when you Google anything. And then half the time they're having sex, which is weird. So you shouldn't even be mad about the art style. Just, just shut up. Give it up. But just the fact that it's a rehash. The fact that we've already seen this. We've already we already know these characters. We've already seen their backstories. We don't need to see it again 
either come up with something new or continue what is already there. Don't take what is already there and recycle it and do it again because it's not necessary. Like I said, you can put your five-year-old on the couch and make him watch the things that already exist. There's nothing There's nothing about the, two, the, the, the 80s Thundercats that is irreproachable by modern people. Like we, like there's, that a remaster could not fix. Fix the audio, make it better. Fix the, uh, like remaster the freaking footage, make it high def and anyone can watch it again and not feel like they're watching some crap from uh, days gone by because people still watch black and white movies. I mean, that's the, just the, that's the most evidence you need to see. Like there's somebody in there that, that that's younger than me. There's some 15 year old sitting on his couch watching the original Ocean's Eleven movie. Okay. Now, granted, that is a different example. If you are in a scenario where the story is hinged on a certain time period, then updating it to the current time period or the time period that it was created in. So things, something like Ocean's Eleven is set in the time period that it was created in. So updating something like that makes sense. But then, but with things like Thundercats, which are set in a, a fictional uh, distant future or distant past, like they never, I don't think they ever really make that clear, but of like an alternate version of our planet, we don't exist there. Our culture doesn't exist there. There's nothing about it that needs to be updated to make it more approachable and relatable. So stop it. Make new things, make new intellectual properties or continue the old ones, okay? Do it! Thank you for listening slash watching. You have been listening to 1F914. I am your host. Here's Jolly, a.k.a. Jolly Wood. A.k.a. Adam. I don't care what you call me. Uh, you can follow me. Oh, yeah! Big news! Before I even posted my last video, my Twitter got unlocked. I recorded it before I went to work on a day that I wasn't even supposed to work. And then on my break, I checked my Twitter and it was unlocked. And I got home and what I had recorded was therefore obsolete because I didn't mention anything about it being unlocked. But it could still happen again. So if you're already following me on Twitter, be sure to follow Hot Sonny Chew Sex because it is my backup. If you are not following me on Twitter, follow both Here's Jolly and Hot Sonny Chew Sex in case it happens again. And so you can you can you can stay updated on the most absurd on all of the absurdest bullshit I rant I post online. Um, did I say thank you for watching? Thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to like this video, comment down below about all the ways you disagree with what I've said and why I'm an idiot, because you know you're gonna, and subscribe for more. And of course, don't die. <laughs>